Hey guys, so we're going to go over face sets real quick. So we're going to hop into sculpt mode, turn on dynamic topology, and symmetrize X. And we'll start pulling out some mesh here with the snake hook so we can get to this. So face sets are something like masks, right? They work on your mesh more or less. And it doesn't work with dynamic topology, so we're going to turn that off. We're going to hit R, set up the remesher, control R. Okay. Now, when you remesh, if you want, you can try checking fixed poles. It's a little bit slower, but It'll kind of get rid of some of that nonsense in there. It helps the face sets a little bit. On the downside of that, it will create some lumpy surfaces sometimes in uh, certain areas. So, but we can hit Control R anytime we need it and uh, work this thing out, anyways. So, face sets are pretty simple. You can use the face set tool, and you can click and drag and create a face set. Click and drag, create a face set. You want to keep working with the same color. You hold Control and start working with that color. Okay. So that's a, pretty much the idea of it, anyways. So you can hold shift and you can smooth these things as well if needed. Okay. Now if you were to press H, it'll hide everything but that one face set. I do keep in mind I'm on Blender 3.6. Blender 4, they changed a lot of these shortcuts. So what you can do is just come up here to face set and you can check out the other uh, shortcuts here possibly. So you do uh, face sets from mass selections, but we can also do face sets from visible and edit mode selections. So if you were in edit mode, and I'm just going to, Control and right click to do a little lasso select. Go back to sculpt mode and click that button. You can make a face set that way as well. So, if that's something you wanted to do, you could do that. Not no problem, really. All right, so with that out of the way, we have some other options in here. Grow face set will do something like this where you hit Control W, it does that. Okay, and then also there is Control Alt W, which will shrink it. Next one down here is expand face set by topology. This is going to pretty much create a circle, what it does. So shift W for that one. It's kind of interesting, but there's also uh, expand active face set with shift alt W. So if you want to use that one, you can see I can do this number like so, uh, which might be quite good depending on what you're working on. All right. And so that out of the way, you can do extract face set as well. If we click that, Tap on that, you'll see it extracts it, and it go ahead and set it up on a uh, or with a solidify modifier. All right. You'll notice it's pretty janky though, as it comes out, it's pretty rough, and that's only because, for the most part, our face set wasn't completely smooth. If we did smooth it, it would come out a little bit better, perhaps. All right. Once we go through that process, there, uh, we'll play around with that a little bit more here in a second. But you can invert. The uh, visible face sets. So if we had multiple face sets going and started doing this number like so, you'd see that we can make a selection. Press H, but we can go ahead and invert those if we wanted to. Press H, Shift H, we'll hide everything. So, right? All right. Now here's the thing. Can randomize the colors if needed. That's pretty much it for this little section here. It's not too much to it, right? But these are quite useful when you're sculpting as well. So what you can do with them is you can actually set auto masking here universally for all the brushes to uh, be masked by the, the face set. So if you're using a tool, for example, like clay strips or something, you can start working in one area. It won't work in the other areas, as you see there. Like so, right? So then you can kind of work the geometry however you need it, and that's fun. Uh, but we can also uh, limit by face set boundary because you notice if I smooth here with the smooth tool, it's not really doing it too bad right now, but it will mess your f nice smooth face set up potentially. So, like we had back to this tool and it held shift and cleaned it up. Use the smooth tool now, you see how it becomes faceted looking again. So you can actually hold those with face up boundary. Okay. So next time it's nice and smooth. Oh, we still have that masking on right there. Let's turn that off a sec. Okay, <laughs> it's not smoothing out now. Try it again. Turn it all off. You can hold it smooth. Face up boundary. If we go across that area, you'll see it doesn't shift that at all. Uh, which is quite nice. You can also use it maybe in that manner there where you create a little bit of a uh, indentation perhaps. 
be quite cool. Alright, so moving on from that. That's our masking set up there. Now every brush, of course, has the ability to do the same thing. So you could do this for individual brushes and not necessarily uh, the whole, all of your brushes anyways. Alright, with that out of the way, we do have box face sets and lasso face sets as well. So if you want to utilize that, perhaps that's a possibility. And uh, I don't know if there's a way to hold the color, but there you have it. Okay, so if you want to do something like that, you can. And then, of course, the box one as well. All right. Moving on, we have Mesh Filter. And Mesh Filter has something quite, kind of cool in here, which is Relax Face Sets. Okay, and with Relax Face Sets, you can see we'll smooth all of the uh, edges or the borders out. Anyways, I click and drag it. Just shift, shift your selection around a little bit, but still can be quite useful to you. All right. So let's play around with doing some more extraction of this stuff here. We'll get into maybe how you might go about this doing this. I'm still trying to figure out a better method of extracting and having clean topology by the end of it. But we'll try to get something going here. So let's relax face sets. Bring it over a little bit. You see our selection looking like so. Let's not do this. Where we have um you don't want like little single faces with the wrong colors on them, basically. Alright, but we can do this number like so. Oh, by the way, when you're using this mask tool, if you're using a tablet, turn on the pin pressure sensitivity. You can do really small selections, and they can do really large ones as needed. It's quite useful. So, I'm going to relax them all real quick. I'm going to remesh it one time and do it again. Move some of this out, maybe. You do want to have this mesh relatively clean smooth not like a not too too rough or anything all right when you do this now you could take a face set and you could press like h for example if you wanted to do it this way you could where you use the mask box mask that whole face set and now you can actually do a mask extraction as well so we can click on this thing here and you can see you can extract the mask. Boom. And so what's good about that, if you didn't see what it was doing or what it asked, is that it you have smooth iteration, so you can actually smooth the boundaries even more, perhaps. But it will lose a little bit of its shape. So um, it's maybe useful to you. I think regular face extraction might be more appropriate. So we'll press A, clear the mask. Now we can do uh, face extract face out here. Boom. And we got a little face like that. So, nice. Here's the thing. Now, I tried this multiple different ways on how to clean this thing up a little bit more so it's not so uh, crazy looking like this. There's two ideas here. You can use quad remesher or you can use the uh, quadraflow remesh that comes with Blender. All right, so believe it or not, Blender does have a quad remesher, but it doesn't work very well, generally speaking, And but it does seem to work pretty well in shapes like this. So we'll see what happens. We'll go to um, the object data panel here remesh area. This is your regular voxel remesher. There's one for quads right here. Click this and we have some options available. The one that we're most interested in is maybe symmetry but also mesh boundary. But if you want to preserve paint mass, normals, keep things sharp, that's a possibility. And this works better usually with lower um, face counts. So you go ahead and type in like a thousand for example and click OK. You'll see we get this kind of a result. And it doesn't do maybe always the greatest but if you don't like the result you get What's kind of interesting is that you could change the seed count, right, and change it to something else. You might get different results out of it that look better, perhaps. In our case, none of that's working out that well. So um, what I'm going to try doing instead, that's probably because of the symmetry. So we could try doing it with um, without the symmetry on and see if it holds a little bit better. It held okay here on the left side, but not on the right side. So yeah, it's a hit or miss sometimes with that. But fortunately, if you have the quad remesher add-on, and this usually does work, by the way, which just happens to not work too well here on this one. But uh, we use a quad remesher add-on. Go ahead and set symmetry to X. Um, and set the quad count that we need, in this case pretty low probably. Uh, we could do a thousand, for example, and remesh this. And it, it doesn't do too bad, right? Like it's, uh, it's pretty decent. So let's extract a few more real quick. 
go back to sculpt mode on this thing, extract, and go back to sculpt mode and extract. Unfortunately, you have to do that, but uh, the goal here is we're going to hide the base. We want to see if we remesh these with approximately the same settings here. If they'll be closely matched. And you see how they're not? There's just a slight gap in here. Uh, it may be okay if that's something you want, but generally speaking, that's probably not what most of us are going to be looking for. So let me go ahead and delete this one. Bring back its original. So you can see how close they match like this. All right, so this is where things get interesting, in my opinion, because if you crank up this quad count quite a bit, let's try 20,000 here and see what happens. And we remesh this. If we have enough topology, it sometimes works out. And you can see it actually created an error and failed. I don't know what happened there. We'll try to fix that one in a second. And it's still not having a good time. So let's do adaptive size up. Yeah, it's still not enough for it, apparently. I was doing these at 100,000. And it seems like it worked out okay. Where it would hold the... Uh, the main shape but today for whatever reason it is not doing that oh you know what they're asymmetrical slightly sometimes when you're sculpting you think everything's symmetrical because you're using symmetry but it isn't always symmetrical so we'll try this one here see this one fails i'm just going to use machine tools and clean up on it and we'll try it one more time and see if that helps it sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't if not we can try m merge by distance Hold shift and drag this a little bit until we get a couple of vertices to maybe collapse. Or we could try symmetrizing it manually as well and see if that helps it out. No guarantee there. Um, for whatever reason, this mesh said no, not today, right? It does not want to work. So let's dissolve the middle perhaps in these two. Try it again, see what happens. Yeah, it's very bizarre. I've never had that really fail consistently like that. So, all right, I guess that's a no go too. We'll remesh this one for now. Okay, so that one's decent. If this doesn't work, we're going to delete it. I think Quadriflow might have messed it up somehow. So we'll bring back the original. We will extract this face set again. And we'll try this one more time, and hopefully it works out this time. Yeah, so, okay. You can see they're they're pretty closely matched. Like, they're not too far off from each other. That's definitely not perfect, but they're pretty close anyways. So these meshes need to hide, by the way. Only the retopo ones. All right. Now it is off, though. So let's see if we can't just... I'm going to try mirroring. Let's see if we can't get them to line up better. Yeah, there you go. We'll do that on this one as well. Alright, cool. So, we want to make sure the solidifies are off of them, right? Oh, we, we meshed it with the solidify on it. No. Alright, we'll just delete them again real quick. No big deal. Let's take those away. That might be part of the problem there. So we'll just hit remesh. Oh, and it fails without the solidify. It's nice. That's what's going on here. It doesn't want to remesh without solidify. It usually has no problem. I don't understand why it wouldn't. Bring that back. We'll try. Oh, okay. All right. Do an extract again. Get rid of that. Add the original. Remesh it. Wow, okay. What a bizarre uh, situation here. I've never ran into this. Of course, when I'm trying to do a tutorial video, it does it, right? It's just, um, oops, resetting quad remesher, I guess. Fixed it. All right, cool. I guess that's something that happens. I don't know. All right, I got to get all this more symmetrical again. You can actually remesh these again sometimes, and it doesn't have any issue with it, you see? And so all that does is kind of um, works the topology a little bit and kind of cleans it up sometimes. But you can see quad remesh is not having a good time with this shape for some reason. Yeah, quad remesh can be a hit or miss product. So, But you can see we got it mostly correct, so that's what we're looking for. Took a little while to get here, huh? Let's do a solidify. 
and we'll push them in. So. And so this is where it gets interesting. You can add a subdivision, put it up at the top. And this subdivision, you check keep corners, and it'll help keep the corners, right? And it solidifies, right? And then you add another subdivision, like so. So that solidify has an outer crease, which could be quite useful. And it also has an inner crease, if you want to use that, right? The, um, nope, not rim crease. But it has a rim crease, too, if you didn't notice that. So what we can do inner here as well. And so with that out of the way, we could do only rim if we want to get rid of the back faces there. And so if we press A now with this selected, press A, this is the active element. We hit Control L. We can copy modifiers over. And we'll get this kind of result going here. So in theory, at least, it is possible to go ahead and extract very uh, good looking face sets onto a high density quad mesh, perhaps. And if things don't quite line up the way they should, you just go into sculpt mode, turn on your symmetry if needed. You can use the grab tool and kind of tweak things to get them to look a little bit better, perhaps, and make sure there's airtight more or less. So that way, if you were to try to bake this to a low poly later on, uh, you would at least be able to retain these for the most part. And you can take that brush pretty small and do things like that. So it's a really clever kind of way of working, I think, uh, here in Blender that I haven't seen too many videos talking about. So. I figured I'd go ahead and make this video for you guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, maybe you could put these tools to use, all right? So I'll see you in the next one, all right? Take care.